Today we're exploring the theme of balance, both how we can have more of it in our lives and also what do we do when we're really feeling imbalanced or overwhelmed or just out of whack. And today we have a special guest, Elaine Whitman, who's going to help us learn more on this topic. Elaine is my yoga teacher, so I have gotten to see firsthand how she embodies being in balance both on the mat and off of it. And that's because she's been practicing yoga for over 35 years. She has been teaching full time since 1993 and she has her very own swallowtail yoga teacher training. Elaine is also a body mind centering practitioner and she regularly assists her teacher, Bonnie Bainbridge Cohen, who also founded Body Mind Centering and Elaine lives and teaches on the North Shore. So we all really want to welcome you here today. We're looking forward welcome. to this. Thank you. Thank so, you so for Elaine, inviting me. How, how do you approach balance, you and Body Mind Centering? What does balance mean to you? From both a yoga, classical yoga, and from a body mind centering perspective, and particularly from body mind centering, um, balance isn't a place. Most of us would like to find the answer and just have it mm -hmm. and stay there. And that's not the truth of it. The truth of it is that we fall down and we get up, that we go into balance, we get out of balance, and that without imbalance, there is no balance. It's a in body mind center, we call it shadow support. So it's when we fall down that we remember, oh yeah, falling down, oh yeah, getting up. There's a yoga posture that most folks know. It's called tree. You stand on one leg. You stick your other foot somewhere. You put your hands at your heart. If you stay there and you're really going to put yourself together in balance from the outside, and you come to a place and you want to stay there forever. It's really rigid. It's very hard to stay there. It's hard to stay there and breathe. It's hard to stay there and let your physiology have its natural course of events. Mm -hmm. So it's not a place. It's a, it's a territory. It's a process. It's a, I'm in balance. I am balancing. I am balancing. I am balancing. Whoops. Oh, don't watch, watch the glass, down. Elaine. <laughs> I fell down. So it's only when you fall that you have the end result of true imbalance. Before you fall down, you're still balancing. And um, for most folks, we don't actually notice we're out of balance until we fall down. And that's metaphoric or spiritual or like you yell at your sweetie or you know you, uh, uh, done that. <laughs> <laughs> you do something so that's that's where I come to balancing from that it is a natural state of affairs to be in balance and it's a natural state of affairs to be out hmm. so that's really important because when we fall down one of the first things we do is beat ourselves up I did that again I can't believe I did that I'm out again don't deserve to live and the truth is, is that that's just the way it is. If we can fall out of balance with equanimity and go, oh, there I go again, how cute is that? Mm -hmm. that's, that's a general approach. A really different approach. Mm -hmm. Wait, what is equanimity? Equanimity, oh, that's a good one. If we could embody equanimity, we just be peaceful, happy, everything is fine, you know? I fall down, great. I stand up, great. I'm in balance, great. I'm out of balance, great. This moment, great. Next moment, great. Have money, great. Don't have money, great. It's all good. So not having like a judgment or an opinion about whatever's going on, whether it seems like a good thing or a bad thing. Everything is already perfect. Uh -huh. oh. So the first thing I would say is that we live in a culture that is doing, 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 right. doing, doing. And we just keep go going, going, going. So if we get a little bit off, our track of, you know, a little bit off, enough, off balance, we keep going, we keep going, and pretty soon we're like someone we don't want to be. Mm -hmm. Yeah? So, as soon as you notice, which can be, depending on the day, a little ways off balance or way off balance, oh my God, look where I am now. Um, as soon as we notice, I would invite us to pause. Mm -hmm. And how you pause, and how you experience the pause is really personal. And the pause is a really important practice in body-mind centering. It's based in the systems of the body and our physiological processes, bones, skin, muscles, fluids, the stuff that we are made of, energy also. 
and in our personal and uh, human organ organismic uh, history from conception through walking. We go through some paces. We don't start walking, we start crawling. And all of the stuff that we've done, all of that is potentially support for us. So in body-mind centering, we're looking for support before movement. And I would say that in terms of balance, we're looking for our relationship to the earth, a relationship to ourselves, a relationship to others, to the sky. So when we're off, we're out of, we're not in relationship anymore. We're not home, is the way I most simply put it when I teach. Mm -hmm. So how do you come home? And the first thing is to either stop what you're doing because you know you're not home, or you might ask yourself, so am I home? If things are not going the way you like things to go. Most of us have telephones. When the telephone rings, you could smile. You could take one breath. So what I'd like to do is actually bring us into a way where we could invite ourselves to pause and experience pausing. We all know how to do stuff, and what we have less experience in is not doing. So if we find the earth, because she's our mother's support, so I would invite you to feel your feet on the ground. Your feet can be parallel to each other, whatever. You can come to the outsides of your feet, insides of your feet, just feel the weight forward, back, feel your buttocks on the ground, your sitting bones on the ground is your chair. If you're standing, it's your feet. Whatever touches the earth in its manifestation as chair or couch. And then close your eyes. Notice the fact of your breath. You don't have to notice it in any special way. Just the breath comes in, the breath goes out. Often, one breath is enough. I usually give myself three in case one isn't enough. Then there's a lot of leaving. 